today we're going to go from this into this. So stay tuned. For this project, I was inspired by a piece of work by Kath Kitson, and therefore I've put together a range of lovely colours. Okay, so this is, um, they're all iron weights, that's a chunky, but it's a kind of a thin chunky. This is a DK, this pink, so I'm going to be using um, two balls in order to make it a little bit thicker. Um, this is an old one that I picked up, somebody was selling online, and it is uh, shade 0772. It's, it's a very nice greeny colour. Um, that's Dermo Studio Anti-Pilling, that's Chunky Crafty 99p a ball, I think from Home Bargains UK. And some Baby Aaron White, some Aaron Blue there, and again that's Dermo's Anti-Pilling in the DK, which I'll be using two strands of. So let's get started. For this project, you're going to need your 46 knitting machine or your 48 if you use Centro and also your 22 needle knitting machine. You're also going to need some waste yarn to cast on and cast off. So to start our project, we're going to cast on as normal over, under, over, under. And knit five or six rows of waste yarn. Throw the excess into the middle. Starting with the green colour I've chosen, but you could use any colour that you like, of course. We're going to switch colours. Roll that in while it catches. Zero our clock. I always forget to do that. And we're going to do 65 rows in this particular colour. And that will be the back of the hot water bottle cover and it'll wrap around slightly at the bottom as well before we start our striping. So off we go and I'll see you when I get to 65 rows. And we're just coming around to row 65. Here we are, 65. So cut off our yarn that we're using now. As you can see, I've already done three rows of the stripe pattern following the uh, joggless technique by Alina Herra Designs. And now I've just added the blue yarn for this row and I'm going to do one row before I get to row two. When we come around to hook one, where well, we can see that there, what we're going to do is we're going to pull that behind. And again, I saw this on Alina Herra Designs. This is not my discovery at all, but I I quite like the jobless idea. And it looked complicated before I found her video. So then we lift that one off the two red pegs underneath. And making sure that it's going on over there and under the pins as, as usual. We always keep a visual on that uh, when we're knitting in general anyway, don't we guys? So... tie our white and our blue together exactly the same as just ordinary doing the color changes on that keep our strings all neat and tidy and five rows again here we are row five yarn in the middle and now we go to our cerise and for the my ducks are laughing again and I'm using a double strand of the cerise because it's only DK and I just want to use it because it's a beautiful colour and we're starting to touch the table here now so I'm going to gather this up a little bit there we go ok there's all our strings so here we go round watching our two strands of yarn and the same as before we pull this main yarn behind the needle and we hook up that stitch use that to pull it in a little bit make sure with this one I got the two but you won't have to struggle with that because you're probably going to be using one strand Lift that up as if it's the stitch under the hook. 
and we do five rows. these together before I forget. There we go. And I just realised I say there you go rather a lot. So apologies for that. Five rows. In total. Five rows in total. So once we finished this row combination, which is one, two, three, four, five, a six colour combination, we start all over again with the green. So we're going to do five rows now of the green, the yellow, the pink, the white, the blue and the cerise. And we'll finish off with waist yarn. So I'll pop along now and do those and I'll see you in a few minutes when I get to the waist yarn stage. So I finished all of my coloured rows, 120 rows in total. And I'll put a list in the description below of the colour combinations and how many rows. And then we move on to the next stage, which will be knitting the top part on the 22 pin addy or central. And if you get sticky ones, I always do for the most part, just hook them off. And here we go. How's that for a colour combination? And this is how the jogless join has turned out. It's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that, actually. I think I need to kind of perfect it and do it again. But as a first attempt, I'm kind of happy with that. So check out Alina Hera Designs. And that's where I got the technique for doing that. Next, we're going to move on to the 22 needle machine and do the little top part for the hot water bottle cover. Try saying that fast. For the next step of the project, we need to do the little toppy part. Technical term, isn't it? The little toppy part. Okay, so we're going to start with some waste yarn. And do five or six rows or however many this little piece gives me. And we're going to go to our main yarn and I'm going back to the green colour we started off with. So I'll zero my clock. One row of plain knit. So I'm just going to do one row and then I'm going to do, um, I'm going to change to a nice pattern. Okay, so we get a kind of, um, it's a mock rib. It's a version of trailing ivy but slightly different. So I'm going to do a uh, wrap two, knit one, 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 but as we've got one left over we're just going to stick a knit one in there, okay? And then we switch and we do one row of plain knit, All we're starting at needle one and we do the same thing again. Wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, oops, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, and we'll add another knit one there. One row plain. Now, remember when you're wrapping, not to wrap tightly that you see, so you're pulling tightly that you can see the needles moving. You don't want that, okay? You just want to bring it around the back of the hooks, gently around the front, so it's snug. It's it's hugging, but it's not having a, a pulling effect on any of those needles. And, then, and the other thing is you don't want it slack like that either. So just wrap it so there's a, a little, little bit of tension there, if that makes sense. So wrap to knit one, making sure every time that these wraps and knits are underneath these hooks or you'll have drop stitches. Wrap to knit one, wrap to knit one, 
And what we need to do now is to seal up our ends and in order to do that we make sure our threads are on the left hand side and straightening our work we will end up with one stitch on the end and one stitch either side and we go through there like that grabbing that one go through and grab that one and pull it through like that and then we go through that one and we pull it through now this is where I struggle a little with my crochet so excuse my fingers and we pull that one through and we'll go to that one and pull it through and back to the other side and pull it through and again and we just zigzag all the way down our work to the end and use our last tail at the end to pull it through the, and seal off and that's how we seal off a tube so I've done the one side and we'll carry on now and finish this one and move on to the next stage When we get to the last stitch at the end, grab our yarn tail, wrap it around, put it through and seals it off. So all we need to do now on these is to remove our waist yarn and we can move on to the next stage. So with this piece, which is the neck part of the hot water bottle, we need to turn it out this way. So it doubles up and with the two cast on areas, together we're going to close the tube off very similar to the way that we closed off the other tube uh, make sure we've got all our little bits and bobs all in line here and we will grab one stitch from one side and one stitch from the other and feed one in to the other simple as that so there we go we grab one grab the other and pull it through and then we'll move to this one and grab that one Oops, I grabbed two there. Grab that one and pull it through. And again, like the other tube, we just zigzag all the way along, sealing our tube nicely together. And then we got the laborious task of removing waste yarn, which is not one of my favorite things. To carry on all the way around until you get to the end and then use your yarn tails to seal off completely before removing your waist yarn. Pull through the yarn at the end, secure. And we just need to remove our waist yarn. With our pieces sealed up neatly, both ends, and our nice little piece at the top there also sealed off nicely. And the bottom piece will be a little bit tighter than the top. So this is the piece we're going to connect to our main body, all right? But we'll do that in a minute. 
So we need to fold it in half. So pick which side you think is the neater side. And I'm going to go with that one. Once we've folded our work over, what we need to do is to make sure we've got a straight line running down and a straight line running up in order to do the mattress stitch as neatly as possible. Um, this side is a little bulkier than normal because this is where all the ties are behind the scenes there where we joined our colours together in the rows. All right, I'm going to start at the top. Reason being is if I go slightly out, it's easier to make it right at the top, right at the bottom, sorry, rather than finding that you ended up with a piece looking like that when you go, oh shoot, I've kind of miscalculated. So I'm going to go from the top, so at least I know that my top is going to join up, and I'm going to take the, see the line of stitches there in a V, they go in a V, if you go in the centre of that line of V's and pick up two stitches. I'm going to leave a little tail there on the same that side as near as damn it there because it's a little bit on the lumpier side as I've said. Okay so going down there and then I'm going to pick up another two. And as you can see they've got two stitches there on the needle because they're the ones that are lying in, in between those zigzags. Right there. And I'm going to follow this one here. Again, you can see I'm picking up two, two strands of yarn there. And I'll pull it through there. And I'm going to go all the way down that seam. Again, two there. And two there. And what we do then, once we've gone so far, is we we'll hold that side and we'll pull. And it'll pull that seam nice and neat together, as you can see there. It's a lovely, nice, neat join. So I'll carry on all the way down to the bottom now. And pulling that seam together as I go along. And hopefully it won't be too, of a, too much of a wonky job. <laughs> relatively neat in my case mattress stitch all the way down the line now I'm going to go and I'll do the other side there and I'll come back and I'll show you then how to attach the small piece onto the top so I'll see you in a little bit sorry for the lighting in here guys but we've actually got sunshine today which makes a change from the rain anyway so I've just finished the other side and I've got to show you what I'm going to do with my tail is I'm going to pop it through the inside, turn it inside out, and just do a couple of securing stitches on the inside. There we go, like that. As we do, just to secure it. And then I'll feed my uh, tail in a little bit and hide it in the layers. There we go and trim that off. And I'll do the same now with the little bits that are hanging out to the top from the mattress stitch. There you go, it's, it's quite a neat finish. If I say so myself, I know um, great shakes at mattress, mattress stitch, so if I can do it, anybody can do it, okay? There we go, even the side that's a little bit more knobbly because of the joins in the yarns there. So there's our nice stripy pocket, all done. I'm going to feed these in now, these little tails, tie them off, feed them in, job done, and then we'll attach this little piece.
So with our pocket all nicely seamed up on both ends, all tails hidden inside and tied off, all we need to do now is to attach our little neck piece. Find the centre of the neck piece and the centre of the main piece of work. Match the two together and using stitch markers, attach the two pieces together in the centre. This will help when we're stitching with mattress stitch across the top shoulders of the piece and around the back and around the front, securing the neck piece to the main body of the cover, keeping everything as central as possible. We'll be using mattress stitch to stitch the shoulders and the back piece, the front piece and across the shoulders. So, with yarn on my yarn needle, I am ready to go. And so is Charlie's, I'm gonna go to back as well. So I start by securing my yarn on the one side and making my way across the back of the piece using mattress stitch. I'm not pulling too tightly with my stitches, but making sure that they are quite secure to the bottom piece. Making my way round now, coming round to the front and doing the same thing again. Mattress stitch zigzagging from the bottom to the top and back again. Making sure that there's still some stretch there so that we can get the water bottle in at the end. And then we're coming round down to the shoulders and mattress stitch across the shoulders there. Bit a bit of tension, secure our stitches inside, back to the other shoulder, mattress stitching across, pull it so we got a nice seam and tie off in the centre. There we go, that is really quite cute isn't it? Now then, I like that, you don't have to do that pattern, of course you can just do a plain plain one you don't have to do stripes you can mix it up whatever way you want to do it but that's the hot water bottle cover let's fit it on our hot water bottle and see if it fits okay so now to fit our rubber bottle in our lovely knitted piece of work this is the fun bit now then square peg round hole situation so we're going to Do that so we make it into a tube this is the plan okay so then we're going to pop the tube through our hole fingers crossed now everyone now we're gonna it's like putting um quilt cover on the bed isn't it when you're struggling to put it on on your own I'm always putting them on on my own all the way down the bottom there we go just need to keep that squeezed in to get it up around the shoulders and we are nearly there so we'll leave the rubber find itself in there hopefully it will flop into the right position with a little bit of wiggly wiggly and in order to get it out you're gonna have to do the same thing if you wanted to wash it of course you'd have to um, bend it inside right a little bit of manipulation now to get our water bottle flat in its pouch getting there we are getting there now I did 25 rows for the neck piece which is just about right you could do a few more if you wanted to I find 25 we don't want it too much over there I guess but that's up to you it just about covers it on the 25 rows maybe it's that pattern there so there we go this is our hot water bottle what do you think guys that's kind of cute isn't it there you go nice to put your little tooties on and it's nice that it's although we've got pointed edges it seems to have found its way into a more rounded shape on the corners which is really really nice i hope you like it i do like it in retrospect i may do a few extra rows here 
um, 25 I did, you may do better to do an extra 5 rows so it should cover that a little better. But as a prototype and a first attempt at it straight off the bat from my handwritten plans there with not even doing a dry run on it, I'm so glad it's worked out. If you like this video please comment, like, share and subscribe. To have you subscribing to me would be absolutely amazing. I've got lots of bits and bobs coming through. Uh, time is my uh, my biggest problem at the moment, getting to time to do videos to show you guys. But I hope you like this one. And if you do make it, tag me on Instagram, CraftyKaz33 and uh, Kaz Harris on uh, the social media like Facebook and the knitting groups and that kind of thing. That's who I am in there. So thank you very much for tuning in. And if this pattern is of use to you, especially in a monetary form, would you please consider giving a small donation to a local animal charity or even in these very troubled days at the moment, a donation to one of the Ukrainian animal rescues. Thank you so much and I will see you next time. Happy hot water bottle cover making. Ooh, that was a mouthful. Bye.